one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome everybody to the October 15th, 2024 council meeting. Everyone is here. Chase will be here. So we will count him as present when he walks in. Um, please help me muddle through this. This is my first time doing this. So we will definitely make some errors. First on the agenda, we will do adoption of budgets. And we will start with the Kiwana Library. And these will be, when I get done reading them and either approve or deny, there will be a pass and sign on each one of them. The ordinance 1015-2024-B is for the Kiwana Public Library. And their general fund is 204449 the adopted tax levy is 133,259 for an adopted rate of 0.1593. Their debt service is 67,050. Adopted tax levy of 87,857 for a tax rate of 0.1051. For an adopted budget of $271,499, adopted tax levy of $221,116, for an adopted tax rate of 0.2644. Any questions, comments from anybody? In public? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve as read. I will make a motion to um, adopt the Kiwana Public Library 2025 budget. <clears throat> Phil made a motion. I need a second. Randy seconded. All in favor? Six zero. Again, as soon as we do this, we'll. Sign and pass. Thank you. Next is the budget for the Fulton County Airport Authority. This is ordinance 1015-2024. Again, the budget for 2025 Fulton County Airport Authority. For the Airport Authority, the adopted budget is $643,100. For an adopted tax levy of $511,500. Nope, the Chase got here. Thank you. Yep. For the adopted tax rate of 0 0.0442. The cumulative airport building of 100000 For an adopted tax levy of 40500 For a tax rate of 0 0.0035. The adopted budget, $743,100. Adopted tax levy, 552000 for an adopted tax rate of 0 .0477. <clears throat> Any comments or questions? Anybody? If that's the case, I will entertain a motion to approve the Fulton County Airport Authority budget. I will move to approve the Airport Authority budget for 2025. Bill made a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Steve seconded. All in favor? Chase, did you vote? Yep. Yeah. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. You're behind Laura. I couldn't see you. <laughs> Passed 7 0. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Ordinance 1015-2024-A. This is the 2025 budget for the Fulton County Solid Waste Management District. Solid Waste, excuse me, Solid, 
Solid waste management, adopted budget, 834,900. It does not have a tax rate, but we still have to approve the budget. So, any questions or comments? That's the case. I will entertain a motion to approve the 25 budget for Solid Waste Management District. So moved. Chase moved to approve. Do we have a second? Randy seconded. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. <coughs> and last but not least, the big one. Ordinance 1015-2024-C. This is a 2025 budget for the County of Fulton County. We'll start with a general fund. $10,261,716. Adopted tax levy, $4,682,982. For an adopted tax rate of 0.3241. Next is 2015 reassessment. 234,187 is the adopted budget. The adopted tax levy is 112,704. For a tax rate of 0.0078. Next is debt service. 601,000. $250 for an adopted tax levy of 460870 for an adopted tax rate of 0 0.0319. Next is Coombe Bridge, <coughs> $357,000 is the adopted budget. The adopted tax levy is $332,332. $332. For a tax rate of 0 0.023. Next is Health Department, 437,566 is the adopted budget. Mm -hmm. The adopted levy is 135,995 for an adopted tax rate of 0 .0094. And Coombe Cap is 379, excuse me, 375,200 dollars. Adopted tax levy of $447,926 for a tax rate of 0 .0310. Total adopted budget is $16,984,472. Adopted tax levy of $6,172,819 for an adopted tax rate of 0 .4272. Any Questions, comments concerning the Fulton County budget? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the Fulton County budget for 2025 as written. I'll move to approve. Phil moved to approve the budget as written. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Lori seconded. All in favor? We get 7 0. Thank you. There you go, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda. Now, it's a little different. We did some changing here. Uh, we're going to have the job classification committee report before we do the salary ordinances. Uh, does someone on job classification want to speak to these? I will begin. You got with, you got a light on? I do. Okay. With the help of um, Pete and Lori, because they're all three of us are on the job <coughs> classification committee. Um, we met September the twenty fourth for uh, two department heads requested uh, that we meet. Um, Don Zimi asked for um, a suppl supplemental to be given to her um, in the, am I saying this right? Yes, I am. 
she was requesting a supplemental of $2,500 um, be added to her salary as um, voter registration duties. And we recommended that since the a supplemental of $2,000 is already in place on the 2025 salary ordinance, um, referred to as registration of voters, that uh, the clerk could pay that amount of money, the supplemental, to whoever she wants to, and she chose to pay one of her staff, so we de declined her request. So this is before the entire council. I will tell you it's Dawn out here. She's not here. So she, let me find it. Dawn did um, send an email to the State Board of Accounts um, saying that she requested the Job Classification Committee consider her request uh, that she receive an additional stipend of $2,500 as a result of a new Indiana code that was passed um, July 1st that all clerks could receive this additional stipend. So she wanted the board members to know that and um, she's asking that we reconsider our uh, suggestion that her request is denied. So I guess I'll ask for discussion. Pete, Lori, do you have anything else to add? We didn't see that it was planned for ahead of time. We could <clears throat> see where she could not plan for it. It was just passed, but she should have probably had inkling earlier in the year maybe that was coming along. But to ask for that at the last minute in the budget, we felt like it was something that we did not feel was there more when just that it was already being paid in the other. But uh, the timeliness is just wrong for this year, we felt like. And we realized it's an election year when it would be paid. <coughs> but seeing as it wasn't planned for ahead of time, she didn't know she was getting it ahead of time. So we stuck with our original plan that we were denying the request. Did she say anything about it, like why she waited, or maybe she just didn't know? All we know is the law passed July of this year. And it says may pay it, not shall pay it. So it's not that we have to pay it. I will maybe add, um, when Dawn contacted the State Board of Accounts for further explanation, I will add this so you guys can make a decision based on everything that we <coughs> know. Um, this, this new stipend of $2,500 um, that was passed into law, again, July 1st, is specifically for the clerk's office, the clerk in the clerk's office not for anyone else in her office. So I just wanted to tell you that. Any other discussion? <coughs> if, if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion that we accept the Job Classification Committee's recommendation, recommendation as stated. Which, which means that we denied her request. Yes. <clears throat> so we want to change it in a couple of years. We can. We'll know about it earlier. True. So basically, it's because she didn't get it in soon enough. You're saying. Basically, <clears throat> she just didn't get it in quick enough before the budget. Well, that was kind of our feeling, yes. Yeah, I guess I would say that 
include it in our next budget next year? Who okay. wants to do that? Two years because it's for general elections. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> what what prompted this? Was it additional responsibilities or just uh, correct as a result of um, during during a general election and the additional duties. one more time. I'll make a motion that we take the job committee's right. Lori recommendation made a of denying the request. Of the denial of the request. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Change second. All in favor? We've got 7-0 for the denial. Thank you. Gonna be fun. Okay. Uh, the next one again. Job class met on September 24th, um, and we were asked to consider a dollar an hour pay raise for the deed deputy auditor um, to increase her hourly rate from $19.81 an hour to $20.81 an hour. Um, because she has taken on additional duties and more of a supervisory position and training the ladies um, in the front part of the office and helping to onboard new employees, um, so helping HR department. Um, so that request was made to us by the auditor. We did, we the job classification committee did agree to that and we are recommending that that be approved. And again, that's the D deputy from $19.81 an hour to $20.81 an hour, effective um, October 26th, which is the beginning of the next pay period. Discussion? Questions or comments? We're not being very consistent. Yeah. We denied the last request because it was not asked for at budget time. And we're asking to vote yes for this when it wasn't asked for at budget time. Understood. And we're not setting a very good precedence. Understood. I'm with Pete. I would agree with that. I think that we need to wait until the next budget time to consider this. Any other comment? <clears throat> Since we do motions on the positive side, I will entertain a motion that we accept the Job Classification Committee's recommendation on the deed deputy <coughs> to the auditor's office. I'll make a motion. Lori made the motion to approve. Do I have a second? I will second. Bill second. All in favor? Motion denied. Opposed. Now opposed. Excuse me. How many is opposed? Four? Three. Three? We've got a tie. Who did it? Somebody didn't vote. I'm against it. Oh. Okay, there we go. Now we got we okay. four to three against. So opposed. So the request is denied. The request is denied. One, not the other. Okay. That's fine. That's and this is fine, you guys. This is why all this comes before the entire council. Because we're only three and we're bringing you information. Okay. Next. We've only got three more of these, you guys. Next, um, we, the Job Classification Committee, met um, just before our meeting this afternoon um, because three department heads um, asked that we meet. Uh, this one is um, the EMA director was asking for two part-time 
um, deputy director positions and and uh, she has money in her budget for a deputy director and we the committee recommended that um, we approve what the request but for only one part-time deputy director in her office she wanted to like split the job between she wanted two to split the, the job between two people and she only has enough money in her budget for the deputy director for a part-time position well, I thought she was going to split the, like the 24 hours and the 12 hours right, right. <clears throat> different money either way, right? True. That's true. So you're denying her request, is that what you're saying? Or the well, we're denying the request of two part-time people, um, but approving that she could hire one part-time deputy. But you should clarify the two that she wants would equal the max hours of one. Right, yeah. Just, yeah she's not wanting two at, say, 25 hours each. Right. She's wanting two at 12 and a half hours. Right. Each. So, right. I mean, it ain't no different money wise or nothing. If that's, just, if that's gonna make her office work better if she wants it that way. But, I mean, I guess. I, mean, I hear you. I mean, to me, if it's, she's got the money and it's only gonna be the same amount either way, you got one or you got two taken after you know, half the time, whatever. It's her office, and she'd be allowed to do what she wants. Did the commissioners have any say in? No, this is us. I said no, they had any no. input at all. No, they don't. Well, it's already, it's in the salary ordinance, and it's approved to have an assistant. Yes. It, it's approved for one. Yeah. <coughs> for one assistant. Right, it's approved for one assistant. Not for two. Hours. Right. She's just asking for that position to be shared between two people. Correct. And what was your reasoning, your guys' reasoning for not? Well, because the salary ordinance um, was approved for one deputy. One part-time deputy. One part-time, part okay, gotcha. I know from a management standpoint, the part-time, the ability to have more of them is fantastic just because of scheduling. Um, okay. You know, like for the jail and things, you know, if we we got that open to where you could get maybe two or three part-time people that would cover 28 hours a week versus one person can't do that or 25 hours a week. So from a management standpoint, I see exactly where she's coming from. Okay. I, I kind of thought she was maybe having trouble finding somebody that wanted to do take on the entire responsibility, but she had a couple of people that would split it. <laughs> right. I don't have a problem with it per se, as long as it doesn't create a logistical nightmare about who's working and who's and not. the scheduling. That was my only concern. Right. The scheduling. Well, it's really as far as two people sharing the yeah. responsibility, right. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that as well, honestly. If, if that's the case, then, and, and on the agenda tonight is an amendment for the 2024 salary ordinance. So the salary ordinance will then have to be amended to reflect that at our next meeting if we decide to go with two part-time. Just saying. Well, to me, it's her thing. If money-wise, they ain't be different. If that's the way it's going to make it work better for her, she's in charge. I mean, yeah. her, her office, whatever you call it. You know, what I will do now is I'll ask for a motion. Again, just as this is read. And recommends retaining one part-time EMA deputy position and denies the second position. I will entertain a motion to accept this as it's written. And the motion failed. I'll get there. Okay. Come on, Mom. Sorry. All right, and the motion failed. The two part time? Sure. Right, I'll entertain a motion to go with the two part time as requested. Steve, motion to approve. Chase, second. All in favor? 
seven zero. But this can't begin until the amendment on the 2024 salary ordinance next month is approved, we think. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The next one. Um, the recorder. <coughs> The recorder asked, the recorder's office has a full-time employee and a part-time employee. And she is asking that the part-time employee be made a full-time employee to, to, uh, back indexing of all transferable documents going back to 1836. This process is going to take several more years to get all these documents into in our Laredo system. So she is asking that the part-time person she currently has um, be made a full-time person. This is the recorder's office. And the job classification committee's recommendation is that the recorder's office add another temporary part-time position to be paid from her perpetuation fund um, beginning January 1, 2025 at the part-time rate in the 25 salary um, ordinance of $17.02 an hour. So we are suggesting, rather than making the part-time person full-time, add a second part-time person. That, that was our recommendation. Our, re our reasoning for that is because this is not a permanent job. Once these records are done, <coughs> they're done. We thought it would be more cost effective if she needs help to get it done to add an additional part-time temporary employee that once the job is done, that job is basically done. Mm -hmm. Instead of when you move, when we move someone up to full-time, how do you, then what do they how do you terminate them? Right. For, because they've worked themselves out of work. I mean, it's, this just seems an easier, simpler way and more cost-effective way to accomplish what she needs without creating a problem down the road. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? If not, I will entertain a motion to go to the Job Classification Committee recommendation to add a temporary part-time position. So, so. Pete, motion to approve. Randy seconded. All in favor? 7-0. And the last, um, the job classification <coughs> committee met, uh, the communications director asked that we um, consider eliminating from the assistant director's salary um, the years of service supplemental that is currently stated on the um, salary ordinance. And the job classification committee um, denied that request and because it's currently on the salary ordinance and has been paid um, to dispatchers for years of service, we denied that request. Any questions or comments? If not, I will. Can, you, can you explain why it was denied, I guess? Cutting somebody's pay. 
True. Just because somebody's paid. <coughs> and, and, and the dispatchers have been rewarded for years of service. Well, as long as I've been on the council, so 12 years. Um, so we felt like it was not hardly fair to um, take that away from an assistant director. In my defense, that assistant director would be getting a $3,700 pay increase as is, where the director only is getting a $2,000 increase. So regardless of the 80 cents, whoever takes the position is already getting a significant pay increase with or without the 80 cents. So obviously it would be up to the dispatcher that is going to be appointed to the assistant whether or not she's willing to take that 80 cents decrease or whether she'd like to stay a dispatcher and keep that. Not that she'd be penalized for not, you know, for opting to keep it. But I mean, she's already getting a significant pay increase. And respectfully, um, my position, I won't speak for anyone else, my position is that um, I'm assuming the communications director is the person that does the scheduling. So if the director is concerned about <clears throat> the pay of the assistant director being too close to their salary, then don't schedule them overtime hours and that would eliminate that concern. In a perfect world, that sounds fantastic, but noted. Thank okay. you. Since, since she's my employee, our employee, the commissioners appoint her, uh, you're going to have to watch it because the assistant's going to make more money than the director. That don't even make good sense. Every other department, the highway department, we, we put them salary so that can't happen. So we need to look at it. That's the way you want to do it and pay her that way. She needs to be salary so she's not going to make more money than the director makes. And respectfully, are you talking about the assistant director? Yes. So respectfully, again, uh, the assistant director would not have, would not incur the duties, the supervisory duties required to meet the criteria to be a salaried exempt employee. Why? Now also, not in the salary in a proposed budget they they're not boss when she's gone yeah she is a supervisor uh, be just like the county the highway yeah the assistant would be a supervisor but it doesn't meet all the other qualifications oh, well anyhow in the proposed, proposed budget it shows thirty seven hundred dollars you are correct somewhere else in a salary ordinance it shows she got a dollar an hour like every other hourly employee so those those numbers <coughs> that number is not correct and also, I understand that's something we can look at next year. Because Barry and I have talked several times, and that may be something we need to look at next year. But I was public in my private, I was a supervisor. I had 10 guys work for me, fantastic people. And I had two or three guys that made more money than I did just because they worked the overtime. They wanted the overtime. And they made more money than I did as a supervisor <coughs> and as a salaried employee. So I see your point, but I also see the other side of it as well. Now, is that something that we can look at next year as we did with the Sheriff's Department this year? Absolutely. And Barry and I will be talking more about it. I mean, just, just it's unfortunate. I just didn't, you know, I didn't have anything to do with this budget and it's, it's way off, so. Yeah. And, and I, like I said, when I talked with Barry, I told him the timing was terrible. Everything, the EMA, you know, um, the previous director, Gail, leaving, all this at budget time, and we come into budget, yeah, the timing was terrible. But it is what it is, I'm sorry, but that's the way it works. We'll look at it first. But, but can we look at it next year? Absolutely. Well, as the prior director, no, and in defending Brittany and working around the clock and multiple different things as a sign that it's in a perfect world for her for 40 hours, then she's done it 40 hours. Well, I, and what I'm saying though, Gail, I mean, is you left with you leaving the position open. That's all. 
I'm not right. criticizing your work or your hours, no whatsoever, none whatsoever. I'm just saying you left, budget time hit, we were transferring job classifications around. The timing was terrible to try to get, like Brittany said, she really didn't have input in her budget. So I can understand her frustration. Zero. Absolutely. <laughs> well, no, you Not didn't. really. Just and uh, basically Dawn didn't have much in hers either. Although she did have a couple more weeks involved in what Brittany had. So I can understand the frustration. Absolutely. But like I can say, is that something we can look at next year as we did the Sheriff's Department? I am 100% behind that. I don't think anybody on the job classification committee wanted a, an assistant to make the same as the boss, <clears throat> but no one wanted to take someone's extra pay away that she's earned for years of service. Um, I suggested it should be a salary position, and I was told the same thing you were, Rick, that, which I don't understand all the ins and outs, that she can't be made salary, but I thought that would be a way to fix it. The assistant director is put on salary similar to the highway, and then there's never an issue of, because really what it boils down to is if your assistant works a bunch of overtime, she could potentially make more money than you. <coughs> we, we really can't dictate that. We can't take someone's pay away because they might work a lot of overtime. I, mean, I guess that's that's going to be kind of up to that particular department to ensure that is kept in check was our general thought. I mean it's you got you have to look at both sides. I understand your side but you also have to look at an employee that's been here for north of 20 years potentially losing money because she's advancing. That was kind of a general consensus. Well put. Is there any other discussion? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the job classification committee as suggested. And what did I do with that? Job classification recommends continuing to pay the supplemental wage for additional years of service as outlined in the salary ordinance. I will entertain a motion to approve. As read. So moved. Bill moved to approve. I'll second. Lori seconded. All in favor? Six zero. Chase abstains. And, that, and that's all on the um, job classification committee. Thank you. What do I do with the rest of it? I can't find my agenda. No, Number one, we will do the 24 salary ordinance. This is ordinance 1015-2024-D. This is the fourth amendment to the salary ordinance, the Fulton County, Indiana salary schedule and compensation policies for 2024. And I want to interrupt you. Please do. We may not. So what was decided? We, yeah. we need to, we don't need to change it. We don't need it. Do we? Because that's correct. The, right because the auditor de direct that was denied. Is that, is that correct? I believe that was that's the reason we okay. were amending that. That's correct. That's the only reason? Okay, so we don't need to, we don't we don't need to do that. Well, thank you for uh, Sorry. No, you're right. That would be right. since we denied that. Okay, sorry. Okay. And next is the adoption of the 25 salary ordinance which we will have to amend next month, right? Since we're gonna start one January 1st. Right. So we will have to amend it, but we do have to adopt this one. It, yes, yes. And this is ordinance 0917-2024. This ordinance of the County of Fulton, Indiana, 
salary schedule and compensation policies for 2025. And I'll read just the first part of this. Whereas the county of Fulton, Indiana is an equal opportunity employer, and whereas it is the intent of Fulton County, Indiana, to comply with applicable federal and state of Indiana employment laws and regulations, and whereas Indiana Code 36-2-5-3, Section 3, Subsection A, establishes that the county fiscal body shall fix the compensation of officers, deputies, and other employees whose compensation is payable from the county general fund, county highway fund, county health fund, county park and recreation fund, aviation fund, and any other fund from which a county order issued warrants for compensations, for compensations, sorry. This includes the power to fix the number of officers, deputies, and other employees, describe and classify positions and services, adopt schedules of compensation, and hire or contract with persons to assist in the development of compensation. And whereas Fulton County is contracted with a professional human resources consulting firm, job classification, and Fair Labor Standards Act audit. Whereas the Fulton County Council wishes to establish compensation schedule and pay policies. So has everyone had a chance to look over the schedule for 2025? And this is the third and final reading. Yes, that's correct. Third and final reading. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Pete? It's more of a clerical question. Sir. And this is not because I'm against doing it. I want to preface that. But we're giving the Sheriff's Department to try to bring those guys up some. And we're using some fund, some money from the out of county inmate fund, correct? To do that? that, that is That's what was proposed, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Which, again, I have no problem with this. It needs done. But if I remember correctly, when that fund was established, wasn't there some verbiage in there that it has to be any before any money is spent, it has to be unanimously agreed upon, or at least I don't want to say this, approved <coughs> by commissioners and council, correct? Or am I that's an amendment to that ordinance. It, yes. had to, it had no, just the ordinance itself. If you wanted to amend the ordinance, it had to be unanimously approved by both of you. The only reason I'm asking is I remembered something like that and I wanted to make sure we were doing this right, or if we needed the commissioner's approval to do it, we had it. That's all I'm, so we don't have a problem down the road. I'm no, not, that was very valid. I'm question. not at all trying to deny that or interfere with that going through. I just want to make sure we're doing it right. I believe that I'm in agreement with Travis, okay. as if we want to amend the agreement, it has to be unanimous. That could be, I just, I remember but, something that was discussed about that, I just wanted to make sure we had our ducks in a row before we move forward. That's the way the ordinance, as I recall it, it has to be mutually agreed upon between us, the county and the sheriff, is what the funds are used for. <coughs> but it has nothing, just the amendment of the, the amendment of the ordinance would require the commissioner's approval along with the council's. Well, if that's the case, then my concern is moot. I thought it was the other way. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I remember something I don't know for sure. Doing that. Well, I, I guess I, I, I thought it was if we needed to amend the ordinance. Because we, we did the, we specified those funds this, this summer yeah, for the 70, 15, 15, and that yeah. had to go through both of you. Yeah, yeah that all went. I was going right. to say that went through all Right. Those. But this is just using that money. It has to be mutually agreed upon between the sheriff and the council for the use of the money. So I didn't mean to put it in water. No, 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 sure you're, you're fine. Yeah. That's an excellent question. I just yeah. want to make sure we have everything in the proper order to do it. So and, there's not a I problem. Think, I think we do. Okay. Well, I think uh, we do. That was my only question, and it's not. A good one. And, yes. and yes. Good, for the, good for the record. So good one. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm 100% doing what we're doing. I just wanted to make sure we're doing it properly. Yeah, I agree. And plus, for everyone here, Travis worked hard at getting his budget and tightening his budget up to help us out so we could help the deputies out too. Yeah, I, it, it yeah. took so some work to get here. I just, I, I just want to get out right. public right. as well. Right. The last thing I want is we approve this and then there's a problem and we got to start over. That's all I was. No, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. No I'm starting not. over. No, I know. <laughs> I understand. It's not an easy task. Okay. Because we do want to do this correctly. Correct. That's all I'm 
So any other questions or comments? If that's the case, I will entertain approval of the 2025 salary ordinance. Final, this first reading, or is this? A, this is the last one. Last reading, okay. The third one. So, so moved. Bill moved to approve, second. Pete seconded. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you, and we will. I know that. Seth, here comes the bus. All right, guys. Oh, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> no, no news is good news if I'm not here, right? Bad news is I'm here. We had a situation on Mud Lake where I had a contractor go in and dip the 765 Watson Heisman ditch. That's the beaver dam in there. Um, he was doing some work upstairs or upstream privately for somebody. He called and said, hey, the water's not going down. He knew there was beaver dams in our ditch. So we actually just been trapping him a week prior. He called the trapper, trapper said he was done. He asked, can I go and clean the dams and, and while I'm there swap the ditch? Yes, go ahead. By doing this, I uh, lowered the lake level item. The lowered lake level is supposed to be item 12 inches. Talking to uh, my, the person I had out there trying to be where he thought there was 10, 12 inches water being backed up. Nonetheless, um, water's down 12 inches, give or take and the people that live on that lake it's mud lake there's i think five people that live on 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 it uh, they are upset because the water is down and they rightfully should um, the issue i have is the contract that did this the bill was agreed to be six thousand dollars that was done before it cost quite a bit for them to get out there and mat it to get this down since damages were done to these people that live on the lake I don't know if we should consider taking it out of the Lawson and Heiser account, which is our normal practice. I talked with commissioners. They said to reach out to you guys and ask about possible rain day funds or something like that situation. The way we stand right now, IDEM and DNR have been notified and we are working with IDEM and DNR. I got an update this morning from Chris Stanford from DNR. And tomorrow morning, I go out and start taking shots and trying to get the plan put in motion. Back to the contractor. Um, right now, again, it's $6,000. And not sure what's going to happen in the future as far as if I'll have to go back and remove some of the spoils that were taken out. If I do, that'll be additional cost. Uh, talking with Emerson Harriman at IDEM. I believe that I will not have to do that. I got to get special permits done. I don't know what the permits will cost. At this point, um, the permits again up to my drainage board. We might not take them out of Lost Heiser Ditch because the permits would have to come out of that count anyways when, when being done. Now, back to again the elephant in the room $6,000 to the contractor that went out under my instruction to dip this ditch. The watershed for the Lost Heiser Ditch is 1,085 acres. Okay, the people affected on this area is about three and a half percent of their ground from the road on on the lake property they may own some ground on the other side of the road i'm not including that but it's still three and a half percent three and a half percent of a six thousand dollar bill is about two hundred ten dollars it's not much but it's still slapping you know taking out the account they put money into to maintain these ditches and all this and damages were done he said they will fight us on paying that they won't pay. They, so yes. Whether they will or not, I don't know. They have threatened lawsuit. So they, it, the, the property owners? The property owners. They yeah. have threatened lawsuit. We have not seen any, not with their papers, not seen anything. Um, yesterday at our, at our drainage board meeting, they were all in here talking with us. Um, again, they, they welcomed me to come on the property and see the damages, which I have not done due to the threat of lawsuit. Um, I am. I did make contact with one of them this morning, this afternoon, after talking to DNR. I'm meeting there tomorrow at 9 o'clock. But due to the possible lawsuit that we have been told, one of the commissioners has been told, uh, we, we don't feel, again, we should take this out of the lost Pfizer account. If we don't do that, we got to find the funds somewhere. 
this sorry sorry I'm, Go trying, ahead. I'm trying to follow so uh, this six thousand dollars to pay the contractor you don't want to take it out of the out of the account mm -hmm, of that mm -hmm, ditch. Mm -hmm, whatever whatever yeah but the ditch you, you want to leave that in there correct it's it's a slab because then they will be paying for it because they get assessed on that ditch see? okay so they're paying as part of the ditch assessment okay so if we pay for it out of that ditch assessment they're paying for it and i said they'll fight us on Okay, okay. And, and by so doing what we did, we did benefit people upstream and okay. we did remove the dams that need to be taken right, out. Right, and right. we did do some, we did do some good. Right. But yes. we also did some. Right. What What are the damages? I mean, what? Lowering uh, the lake, I get that. Lowering the lake. Is that what created the dam? <coughs> Correct. So they did get their boats. One one is not their boat out yet. The others did get their boats out. They said they had to get a tractor to get them out because okay. the water's going down fast. Okay. Um, but as far as that, you know, it's a lake property. They it's for recreational. They want to have a beautiful, you know, view out their window, not see foot or two of mud, and then have to get their docks out even further into the water. So obviously, the lake has been higher than it's supposed to be for quite some time. Possibly yes. DNR does not have a lake level for this lake. I was I was just getting ready to ask that if we know. DNR yeah, does right not have right. a lake level for this lake. Okay, that's that was going to be my question because if we lowered it a foot because it needed lowered, that's kind of what had to happen. But if it's lowered a foot than normal, then that's kind of so it's lower a foot than normal. <laughs> the question is how long. So these dams have been here, I mean, a while. Be right. Beavers go build dams and get yeah. taken out and gradually build up. Okay. Right. So over the past 30, 40 years, has it gone to three, four, five inches? It may have. Sure. That doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. Okay. But, but to the point as when this was done, according to IDEM, it's lower 12 inches. But we don't know how much we've helped everybody upstream by getting rid of the beaver dams, how many thousands of acres are now properly Cor draining. Correct, correct. Okay. Um, the only thing I'll say is with the lake at this level, the lake did not come up to this level overnight. Right. It's been there a couple of years. I have not had complaints upstream of the water feeding into the lake except for uh, there is a lady by the name of Kathy Rich. She's on the upside of the lake. She has a open ditch that drains into this. Uh, that ditch is not on maintenance. She called and asked to have her ditch clean. I said we could not do that as there's no account. I gave her contract name. She called him privately and he did it. This was the contract then called me and said, hey, the water's not getting away. It's too high. Her ditch isn't working because the lake level is too high. Exactly. Can I go remove the dams and swap the ditch? So, again, back back to the six thousand dollars. So uh, six thousand dollars. Do what? Buck Creek Lake? No, South Mud Lake. South South no, not South Mud. Mud Lake. It's up uh, northeast of Akron. Oh, okay. So, do I understand right? You're wanting us to come up with six thousand dollars to pay this contractor so you don't have to charge landowners for correct and this is a permanent situation we're just wanting us to pay it correct so and what, what we're hoping is um, again i'm going to go out establish lake level or go and we meet with them and we see where i thought the lake level was where they think the lake level was look for any kind of evidence where the lake level was tomorrow start getting shots on that come up with a plan i do have a plan in place that if they approve it i mean we cannot do anything until dnr says yay or nay how soon do you need to pay this contractor? Um, it does not have to be tomorrow by any means. It could be three, four weeks or <coughs> he, he knows the situation, obviously. And some of the impact being caused by the drought that we're in? It, no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Well, we don't know what the 6,000 could potentially turn into. We don't know. It could be at 6,000. Um, it could be more than that if I did makes me go back to remove some of the spoils from the beaver dams and the dip. well from the dredging and and removal beaver dams it's almost like we maybe need to be in a holding pattern until you see okay and, and, and that's fine we can stay in a holding pattern i just wanted to come up front with you guys and tell you the situation that's going on i'll <coughs> We wait, but if need be, we would pay the money on a rainy day 
for that 6,000 yeah, building absolutely. he has okay. to avoid the problems and then if it gets resolved, the money can be placed back into rainy day and you start, way of when start talking lawsuits and stuff, that 6,000 could get out of hand in a hurry. Correct. And again, they're, they're you know, <clears throat> the lady I talked to today, she was very polite and, and said, you know, come out and be with us tomorrow. We're trying to get a plan going as soon as possible. That way, if the rates ever do come back, we got it in place. It would be proactive. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Which is a thing to do. Correct. Uh, the DNR just had their meeting this morning. But sure, the contractor wants paid. Well, he does, but and Seth and I actually talked about this, and he says that the contractor is can wait till November. Okay. Yes. Well, he knows. But, so, but for him to I be guess. paid in November, we have we have to approve it Perfect. to move forward tonight. Yeah. Or to be paid out of This is a process, yeah. right? Well, and, and I, I say that. So, if it came out of our meeting, out of the drainage board meeting, uh -huh. or the second Monday of every month, so it wouldn't be too much difference to wait the extra week. Like, so he, I, when I say paid November, we couldn't pay him even at our meeting until we have our meeting. It's not like we paid November first. It's the same process for you guys. We have to prove it, go through, etc. It's not a but, but what I'm saying is, if we if we don't make a motion to approve and pay it out of rating day tonight and wait until November, then you won't see the money until December. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. beginning of it. So. I, I, did, I did not ask him about December. I just said, can we wait a month? And he was all, that's possible. <coughs> See so, those situations. So why not? Why don't we approve it out of rainy day? Approve to pay it. I'll make a motion that we, <coughs> yes, that we pay the 6000 that Seth needs. The Ecclesiac actually would have needed. It's the same thing I just did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, but it's mine. Make a motion oh. to pay it now. Okay. To approve it. To approve it now. I can amend okay. to that if that helps. I entertain a motion that we approve it out of rainy day. Phil has made the motion. Do I have a second? Pete second. All in favor of paying the money out of rainy day? 7 0. Thank you. And I'll keep you up to date if anything else comes forward as far as. Bring us a check back and make some conversations. That's what I can do. Hey, Thank you guys. Seth White. Yep. I mean, be beaver pelts aren't worth six thousand bucks. Not more. All right, thank you. Department updates. Mr. Fitch, wake up. <laughs> okay. Um, good evening. Good evening. Can you bring you up to date of the work activities. We've been patching holes, running the brush chopper. Um, we've been running the shoulders down our new paved roads and plucked roads and we've applied the bio seal on our community crossing grants. Um, Brooks has completed the 900 West uh, project, the 600 North project, the 400 North project, and the state road, or uh, the 75 North up to um, and including Lake Bruce. So all their uh, community um, CCMG projects have been completed <coughs> with their paving. Um, their reciting on the shop is done. I think it's looking very nice. Um, it is like this. Yeah. So I think that brings me up to my last point here, the appropriations that you'll see coming through tonight. Um, the two will be for um, the repair of the shop is $67,500 from the rainy day to repair building and equipment. And this is for the siding, the insulation, and the two new windows installed. And the second appropriation is for 69,000 to come from Cume Cap Development to repair building and equipment for the new material, new metal roof over at Kiwana and the balance of the expenses at the Rochester shop. And this is an appropriation <coughs> that we did last month but we had um, we had to cancel that, and it's a redo. Right. That's why we're bringing again over. Yeah, we know. Okay, just so everybody has an understanding. I believe that's it for me. Unless you got any other questions. 
You got a single axle sitting out there waiting on a bed? Yes, and another one's on its way. We'll both be taking over to uh, WA Jones for upfitting here. They think hopefully in December we'll get it, our slots put in to have them upfitted. Huh. Great. Deal. Any questions for John? No. Public? Thanks, John. Thank Thanks, you. John. Mr. Ladd. Blackers done, the paving's done, and Nipsco put the gas in. Wow. Not bad after 30 years. And the last bill, uh, actually, 20 something. Uh, the last bill's been paid, too. Do we have any fish in the sea on other lots over there? There's you can just really, say yes or no. There's two very nice possibilities. Good. Um, it's going to take a while to negotiate out some of what they want, but uh, yeah, there's two really good possibilities, and um, there's a third making inquiries. Great. So um, all you have to do is like the field of dreams, finish it. There's so enough. It's a lot more attractive to go back there and look at a lot than ever It it is. Um, I'll just leave it there for right now. Yeah, it, it's it, done. It's, it's finally that it's it finally becomes something that's appealing instead of an ice cream. Yeah, and you know the um, we've been we've been working with uh, these companies and uh, they're pretty they're very stable and it looks like it'll uh, it's going to go but it's just going to take some time at this point in time. Um, we have a deadline coming up on uh, some of the Lily money for the arts program. Um, coming up uh, at the end of this month. Um, the arts program has is, is been uh, put on hiatus. Uh, they, the Lily wants uh, art strategies created for each of the uh, several planning districts in the state. So uh, our group is uh, coming up with a plan on how to approach that, what to make the application. On the black side, we're moving forward, so by the end of the month, I'll have three more projects put into the bin. Uh, one here, uh, one in Fulton, and well, two here and one in Fulton uh, that I've been asked to, to kick in and do. So um, we're moving forward on that side of it, too. There's nothing really to report on the uh, industrial part right now. We're still talking about roads and, and whatnot. Um, so that's still moving forward. The housing uh, project, um, we've actually found what we think is a really good location. I don't want to let that go right now because we're working on prices, but um, that looks like uh, we finally found a good one. We're waiting on the other uh, developers to hear whether or not they receive their um, tax credit breaks and how many of them are going to get them, what not, all that stuff. <coughs> uh, I thought we would have heard about that by now, but uh, it's the state, you understand. Mm -hmm. uh, what I gave you, um, the first item is just a press release on, uh, that uh, shows that uh, Duke Energy, we have been working with on a tabletop on the industrial park. Uh, is completed. They just just gave us a press release on uh, put out a press release that uh, they think it's a good program, think it's a good site. Um, so that's just information purposes for you. The next piece of paper is an executive summary of um, the hotel study, and it's pretty small, about four pages. But if you will go to page three. And you see uh, estimated increase in sales tax, lodging tax, all these other revenue sources. Those figures are over a five year period. So if you want to figure out what per annum is, divided by five is what it is. Um, and then the back page, the color section that you see, is uh, amenities. This comes from a survey that the company ran. And uh, this just shows what kind of survey or amenities uh, they're wanting in a hotel. We're still negotiating with them. Um, I 
don't know what happened to the copier. I got to be honest. Uh, when I saw that, it was kind of difficult too. Um, but we're we're talking with um, a company on this, and uh, negotiations are still working. So it's still insane. It's what it is. Um, next one is um, I've been asked to post. Um, an educational seminar be about an hour and a half sometime during the week of November 12th through 15, uh, 14th and it's on um, alternative energy sources it's, it's purely speculative it's purely um, educational they're not going to try and talk tell you one source of energy is better than another but they're going to just talk about different types of energy sources. The state's getting really big into alternative energy sources, so once we get some dates nailed down, I'll let everybody know. They're asking, actually, what they want is, um, uh, this is aimed toward you guys, public officials, and uh, so we'll probably wind up having to open it to the public at the same time in order not to violate the open door law. Um, Next thing, and Phil, I'm almost done. Um, so, so give me the dates again for the alternative. Uh, the week of 12, 13, 14, November. November 12, 13, or 14, somewhere in there. Uh, that, that yeah, uh, that's what. That's the week when they can come in. We're just trying to figure out okay. where to put it and what day to do it on. Thank you. Uh, it will be a lunch, and <coughs> we'll, we'll host a lunch. Okay. Um, the other thing is we are at the same time, we've been offered um, another Korean training session. This time it's aimed at um, the educational system, the restaurants, and the hospitals. Uh, but anybody can come, it's open to the public. Um, this won't be like the firefighters program was, this is going to be more cultural. Um, how they act in a restaurant, uh, what happens if there's a medical emergency, something along that line. Um, so we're trying to work on that. That's Unfortunately, that's going to be about the same timeline, too, uh, as the other one, of course. Um, the last one is uh, I'm working with the state, or filling out an application right now, on um, what is this thing called? It's a rural education development program, something like that. It's called RED, and it's strictly planning. Uh, what would happen is we get a group of about 40 people together and uh, figure out what the problems, in our case, Fulton County has. Uh, we will, if we are awarded, there will only be three awards across the entire state, but if we were to be awarded, then we would go through a, a six-month intensive uh, program where we would actually get very specific about projects that Fulton County wants to tackle and, and work on, and then we would create the steps necessary to do that. And uh, so the deadline is, on, again, at the end of the month, and so I'm working on that every day to get that taken care of. And, I think that's pretty much everything right now. The Ready To uh, program, like I said, we'll submit the uh, uh, application uh, at the end of the month, but we won't hear anything before the end of the year on that. But uh, that's actually moving forward, whereas the Lily side of it is kind of stalled. So. Any questions for Mark? Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Another copy of that. I'll be brief. I emailed out a copy of the uh, reports last week. Any questions I can answer on those? 126 inmates this morning, 47 from Grant County, 19 from Howard County. We're holding six federal inmates. We build for 117, 452,000 last year, last year, last month for out county inmates. Um, estimates for the 2025 Tahoes, uh, they're 
they're just coming in now, but they're just looking just a little over two thousand dollars more than what they were in twenty four, which is great news because um, we were really scared that the Tahoes were going to price themselves out because they're the only reliable police car out there right now. So, um, you'll see an appropriation coming through for garage and motor for me. Um, that's thanks to Dodge. Um, we're short on money. We're down to like four grand in our garage and motor, so that get us through the end of the year. Um, food service. New contract for food service I'll present to the uh, commissioners at their next meeting, but uh, looks like meals are only going to go up 4% next year. They were expecting 4.2%, but actually came in at 4%, which is roughly between 9 and 10 cents a meal, depending on how many inmates we're holding. So, other than that, that's all I've got. Say again what your additional appropriation was for. Garage and motor. Jump Durango's. Thank you. They say they had a lot of problems. They had the state police finally got away from it. They've got, I think they said they've got 350 they still have to, they've already bought. They've got to issue those, but they put in an order for 150 Tahoes for next year. So why they decided to hop on, why they thought they were going to have different Durangos than we have is beyond me. But. So anyway, and I mean, knock on wood, we haven't had any issues with the Tahoes. I mean, regular maintenance. We haven't had any mechanical issues with them at all. So. Um, well, 2024. I mean, yes, someone's got some miles on it. So, I, um, yeah, we haven't had any mechanical issues with them. So, yeah. which with Durango's, at 20,000 miles when we started having the issues with those. So, funny story. Got my oil change at Dodge today. Guess what was in there? Uh, another another uh, small community used to police yep, Durango. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, <coughs> and they know that they've got an issue. <coughs> yeah. It's what it is. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Kathy? Anything? No, sir. Brittany? Mm -hmm. um, just a couple things. Um, first, um, officially, last week I'm full and trained, so um, I'm happy with the time frame that I was able to get that done so quickly. Um, dispatch has been very sick. Um, we're working on a skeleton crew the way it is. So <clears throat> luckily I got trained enough to where I get to sit and dispatch quite a bit and work um, in the center. Um, but now they've given the gift to me for not feeling good, so that's awesome. Um, we did hire two new people and they both will start on Monday. One will be on the night shift and one will be on the day shift. So we're excited about that. Um, at the last city council meeting, the city, the city council signed the agreement for um, the interop or the interlocal agreement for the dispatching for the city. I believe that's with the county attorney, but I haven't heard anything, so I issued an email out to her today to follow up on that because really we need to have that done shortly. And aside from that, I don't have anything. Any questions, Mr. Brittany? Gentlemen. Jerry, last but not least. Okay. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening to you. Just want to give you an update on what's happening uh, in the coroner's office. And Fulton <laughs> County, according to our vital records registrar, Terry Randstad, I found out today that um, we've had 126 uh, deaths in Fulton County for the year. Of that, 70 females and 56 males. Then our coroner's uh, services to the county, um, we've actually investigated 49 deaths, and of that, 22 females and 27 males. So that's right at about 39% of all the deaths that occur here in Fulton County that we're investigating. Um, most of those are natural. Um, we have had uh, eight accidents, including three falls, two overdoses, three motor vehicle accidents, and a couple of those were relative to um, influence of drugs as well. Um, We've conducted uh, three labs that we've sent out to Woodlawn for different types of things, such as uh, maybe like glucose level, 
troponin for the cardiac or D-dimer. And then we've also sent in about 13 uh, toxicologies to Access in Indianapolis. We've also conducted 13 autopsies. And then we also have another one that we had to pay for from 2023 that was then last summer we got billed for it in January. <coughs> so um, I wanted to let you know I was able to go to the coroner's training board meeting. We had a great meeting last month. Uh, went over our uh, conference that we had in June. We had over 320 people there, uh, mainly coroners and deputy coroners. There was a few others that come and attend that too. There's some law enforcement that comes sometimes and maybe some medical. Um, we had our EMA quarterly meeting about a week ago. That was very good. Uh, things were moving right along with EMA and you heard about some of the things uh, tonight earlier. Uh, LEPC, that's coming up and that's under the EMA arm. Um, that's the Local Emergency Planning Committee and what that is, is we're getting ready to do the um, in-person exercise that will be held a uh, week from Saturday down in uh, Grass Creek, across from the fire station on the lot there. So I can't t reveal all the things because it's got to be kind of a surprise for those that are there because it's, you know, lots of action. And that'll involve, like everybody from the hospital to Parkview EMS to the fire departments, um, the coroner's office, and um, everybody that works or is like the EMA volunteers as well. So we're excited to do that, and you might, and so that's what we do on Saturday morning. If you hear things, scanner traffic, uh, we're going to be working with communications too, and we might even have a couple <coughs> of communications people on site. We're hoping we'll see what happens. But anyway, so it gives us a chance to get you know hone our strategies for emergencies like this. Because in addition to that, we also get to um, this helps with different grants and things like that for the county for later this year and some of them are heavy duty grants so it's important that we do this we also have to incorporate what's called a tier two chemical and that tier two chemical um, we've had that already okay um, they've got some evaluators and everything's looking good for that so we're very excited about that happening so if you want to cruise by next saturday morning between eight and noon you'll see us all down there at um, grass creek um, also, I have a public service announcement. November 3rd is coming up. That's just before the election. And Abinabi Township Fire Department is hosting their breakfast. And I'll be there to help them with that too. But come on down because it's delicious and it's all you can eat. So that's on a Sunday. And that's right after the time change so you can really sleep in another hour and then come down to Abinabi with all the Indians there. So wanted to let you know that. I want everybody to be safe. We got Halloween coming up. Watch out for the wee ones when dusk is dropping upon us and everybody stay safe out there. So anyway, have a good evening and everybody be safe. Any questions for Gary? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Gary. You're welcome. Steve, what time is that this coming Saturday? No, it's a week from Saturday. Yeah, it's the 26th of October. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did we get everybody? If so, next on the agenda is the minutes. I hope everyone had a chance to read the minutes. My suggestion is we table the approval of the minutes until they can be corrected. There are several incorrections, and with the State Board of Accounts, getting us on a couple issues we had last year, I guarantee you they will pull our sheets again, and I want to be sure that we are correct. So that is my suggestion. There are two or three times in here I made motions. Yeah, I, I can suggest, I can opinionize, I cannot make a motion. So yeah, I, I have talked to the auditor and we're going to get these corrected. That's my suggestion. The board can make up their own mind. Sounds good to me. I would, do what you said. I'll entertain a motion to table. Steve's motion to table the minutes. Lori, second. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Okay, got that taken care of. Next are transfers. 
that right? On transfer? Two folks with us, sorry. Uh, first transfers out of County General to the Drainage Board. $300 from Continuing Education, $7,000 from Engineering, and $600 from Published Legals to Office Supplies, $300, Office Supplies, $7,000, and Office Supplies, $600 to purchase better office equipment. I wish you'd have stuck around to explain that. But. Yeah, because yeah, it's over the amount where they're supposed to come and get bids. So, um, are there any other questions? Rick, can you, <coughs> the drainage board, can you? No, I don't know what he, Brenner's desk, I don't know. You have to ask him. Okay, well, like I said, I wish you'd have stuck around for this. Yep. But anyway, I will entertain a motion to approve. Commissioners signed it. Commissioners have signed it. Then I'll move to approve. We'll move to approve, we have a second. Steve seconded, all in favor? 7-0. Next, County General to the Surveyor. Gas, oil, and lube, $400. Survey Seminar, $100. Photo and Blueprint, $294.58. Road School, $100. Needs to be transferred to Office Supplies, $400. Monuments and Reference Signs, $100. Monuments and reference signs 294.58 and monuments and reference signs 100. End of year budget transfers to buy work supplies for outside work done. Again, commissioners have signed it. Clear as mud. So, absolutely, yeah. I will entertain a motion to approve. Sure. Randy moved. Second. Pete seconded. All in favor? 7 0. And he gets one more. County General to the surveyor. Maintenance and equipment, $192.25. To monuments and reference signs, $192.25. To buy equipment for reference sign and section corner outside work. Again, commissioners have approved this. I entertain a motion to approve. Steve moved to approve. We have a second. All second. Bill second and all in favor? Seven zero. That is that. Next, we have some additional appropriations. Now, these we have to sign. <coughs> yeah. Out of County General to the Sheriff. And he alluded to this earlier garage and motor, $50,000. Not enough budget in 2024. Any questions? I will entertain a motion to approve. Steve moved to approve. We have a second. Randy second. All in favor? 7 0. And again, we sign. Next is somebody? County Highway. County Highway. Out of the Coon Cap Fund for Highway Mechanic. And this goes to the building repair and equipment, $69,000. This is for the new metal roof and repairs at Kiwana Barn. And as John said, and the additional for the Fulton County Highway Barn, which I drove by the barn. It looks good and it was needed. So I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Pete moved. Phil seconded. All in favor? 7-0. This is from the Rainy Day Fund to the Highway Mechanic. Repair building and equipment, 67,500. Insulation, siding, and window repair on the shop at the main barn. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Chase moved to approve. Need a second? Pete seconded. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Last but not least, that silly key on a public library. Yes. Wow. This is an additional appropriation. 
comes out of debt service. I'm assuming this is out of your debt service. It's going into debt service. Going into debt service. $1,500. $1,500. Additional amount requested, $1,500. And just a real quick, yes, sir. not to put you on the spot, just sure. a real quick. Um, so they moved the date of that payment, like I was telling you the last month okay. I was here, mm -hmm. and that payment makes it short of what I had in our reserves. And in our reserves, I'm sitting on $28,000. But with the appropriations that was previously approved in the budget last year, it'll still be $1,500 short. Okay. So that's a recommendation from the DLGF that I'm not short at that payment. We okay. understand that. <laughs> Any questions? No, we'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So I'll move to approve. Do a second? Pete seconded. All in favor? 7 0. This is a little different. Now, is this one of the things you need a copy of then yes, when sir. we get everything together? Yes, please. Okay. No worries, no worries. No, we got it all right here. Okay, that's all we have. Any old business? Pete? No, sir. Randy? No. Chase? No, sir. Lori? No. Steve? No. Phil? I have none. I have none. Auditor's office? Any new business? Pete? No. Randy? No. Chase? No, sir. Lori? I'm kind of waiting to hear about a redevelopment commission meeting. I have not heard about one. I think it's going to take a commissioner to Initiated. Probably initiate it, so I have to speak. I you know I'm waiting in case you guys got the letter. I do too, so. Okay. Steve? <coughs> Bill? The only thing I will mention is the county's portion of the host fee fund for um, June and July is $73,306.45. What was that again, please? Seventy-three thousand three hundred and six dollars and forty-five cents. June and July. October, June and July. Great. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That's and all I have. I will acquiesce to Rick on the new business, and then we'll banter back and forth. I'm sure. Any okay. new business from the elders' office? And with new business, Rick, you're okay. on the stage. Kind of on Lori's subject. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, I've been sending you stuff from Jason Sindler, Baker Tilly. Um, one of the things that is supposed to be done is a TIF uh, spending plan, and it's got to be done by the 1st of December. It's brand new this year. Um, and, and where we got TIF at, is if you guys was reading the email, is out on 4th Street to pay the bond. So you've got to have that money recorded and, and go through a process, or you cannot use that TIF to, to pay the bond payment so I've got Jason working on that with us I hope, hope that's okay I kind of talked to Phil and Ron one day about it was coming up and it was kind of under the gun he says there has not been no plan done yet so that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about you notice he had a couple more things listed that we can take as options if, if we want to later on I had him spell out some stuff and a couple of things I'm talking about is helping maybe Kathy with the budget and helping Kathy if she's got any problems from time to time. I, uh, he has in there that he could come in at the first of the year and train ever who wanted to listen. I know you got new council members coming in to budgeting 101 in about two or three hour class he could give. Um, and I think that bill was not to exceed $2,500 for doing that. But if you read that, he's got some steps in there if you guys are interested. Um, on doing some stuff. I know Kathy would like to have some stuff for her help. You know, he, he sent a plan when all everything's due, when she's got to have everything lined out so, so he can keep her on track. But I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, we may need some money to at least pay for the tip deal to get it going, and then we can decide on what you guys want after that or what everybody agrees on one after that. Well, that was a key question. I was going to, this is where we're going to get the money from to offer your suggestions. but. I mean, I think Jason would be a, an asset, there's no doubt about it, um, especially when it comes to budgeting. 
and to help Kathy out. And we've, we've, Kathy, and, and I know Phil and I and Kathy have talked about it. Um, bring it in to help the new council people and also the new department heads that are coming on board. <coughs> The TIF thing is something new, and that's that's got to be developed by the redevelopment committee. That's yeah. before it even that's got commissioners into us. So we're yeah. we're kind of under the gun on that. It kind of got sprung on us a while back. I didn't even know about it. So it is supposed to run through the redevelopment commission. So Brian was in on that conversation. We had a telephone call with Jason yesterday from Baker Tilly. <laughs> So he, he understands it. So I don't know what the process is. So, you know, Brian, I'll tell Brian to get in touch with the committee. I'm sure he got the, I know he got the emails. And I, <coughs> did everybody get, did I said, did I get everybody, everybody yes. got sent them? Yeah. So they can read them too and kind of understand mm -hmm. what he's talking about a little bit. So. Now, am I to understand though that with what Jason sent us, you guys have to approve that first because you guys approve all contracts. Is that that is correct? Well, it? yeah, and the way I understand the contract, and it was kind of last minute. Like I said, we've been trying to scramble to get everything together. Um, he set that at two o'clock today, or one thirty today, or whatever, and I sent it on as quick as I could give you guys a chance to look at it. I don't know. I, I think we can sign it and then pick and pick and what what we want at a later date. He's just offered his <coughs> services. It's just kind of a scope of work. Is that the way everybody took it out? I mean, I haven't had a chance to agree. That, so. that, 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 that was the scope. Was, he just the scope of what they can offer, and he said that the council can pick and choose, the commissioners, whoever, can pick and choose. And it what was they fairly. Want. It was fairly broad. Yes, yeah, it was very broad. Yes, which right. we asked him to make it broad, but just based, to be based on on needs. Yes. Needs. Yes. 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 And that's that's what. We, we and just have that's what you were asking for. Yes, yes. right, right. So I, I don't know how you guys want to handle it, what your thinking is, or what, you know. Um, put a dollar amount every so often on, on it. If, if Kathy needs it, you know, you've got $10,000. When that money runs out, you got to come back to us and explain why you need X, Y, and Z, or how, how you want to handle it. That, that's why I'm bringing it to you. And I don't know that it has to be done tonight, but I think well, you need it. it. Yeah, because I mean, I haven't even had a chance to read it yet. Yeah, so, so read it over. Yeah, look it's it not over. anything that has to be done tonight. And we just recorded but, to bring it to but, you. But the we only thing is. The, yeah. we we the only thing, like I said, it's under the gun that we've got to get moving on is the TIF spending plan's got to be done by the 1st of December, or you cannot spend the money for the bond, the way I take it. It has, to be, it has to be submitted in Gateway by December 1st. Oh, it, if it I, is not, you get wrote up for being late and you will not be allowed to spend any of the TIF money. Now, are, am I not correct? Is it for years, and don't tell me the exact number because it was before I got here, but we've been subsidizing the bond payment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Thanks, Lori. I forgot. Mm -hmm. That's right. You and were, he, he has got the numbers in, in that. He looked it up to see how much the bond payment was and how much it was taken in. He's got the numbers in that. When you read it, Ron, you can. Well, I thought we were close to paying that bond off. Is that two years, years? I maybe? think you're with, yeah, within two years. Okay. I think there's only two payments left if I understood the conversation. It sounds right. It does sound right. Okay. So even though we get that money, we can't use it to pay the bond off if, if we don't get this in. This is not right. submitted. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It has to, what you're going to anticipate your spending has to be in that plan and it has to be just it has to be in gateway by December first. <laughs> and 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 that has to be submitted by the redevelopment commission. The redevelopment commission puts it together, but it has to be it. submitted by the auditor. Yeah, oh, the auditor yes, it. yeah, I didn't mean to physically <coughs> enter what, in the gateway. Well, I don't, we could have Jason submit it too. I think, well, yeah, I think Jason could that, submit yeah, it. Could. He, he sent us the forms, he sent us the stuff to start the process going. One thing I did read when I perused it was the fact that the governing body has to approve it, which the governing body would be us. On the TIF? Yeah. Yes. We have to approve yeah, the, commi the committee's findings. Because of spending. Because you're spending. Yeah, yeah. spending. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we need to have it done by next, Council next meeting in November. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, your November meeting. Yeah. 
because it's what said it has to be submitted by December 1st. By our November meeting? It has yeah. to be submitted into Gateway by December, yeah, by December 1st, 1st. So you've only got one meeting left to do it. If we need to approve it, we have to approve it. So you need, yes. they need to get the redevelopment so, committee. So that means, so, so, so Lori and I and Brian, Oh, you guys are the redevelopment. We are the redevelopment commission. <laughs> oh. Brian is the redevelopment commission president. So he's the one, and I'm not dogging anybody, so he's the one that needs to call the meeting up mm -hmm. for us to do whatever it is we're to do. Are you going to call him and inform him of that, or do you want me to do that? <laughs> go ahead. I saw you raise your hand. <laughs> I figured you would go say that, but. He got the email. He should know it too. But but I'll make sure. He's so on. then Jason's yeah. recommendation was was the bond payment, and then maybe like twenty five or fifty, whatever number, in miscellaneous expense. So if something were to come up, or the bond, something with the bond, but if something were to come up and you needed to pay something for redevelopment, mm -hmm. you've got that money there because you've. And you don't have yeah, to spend it just because you say show up. If you put four hundred thousand in and only spend three fifty, that's good. But you can't do it the other way around. Yeah, you can't. I know before Tilly has advised us on redevelopment commission, and we have paid their fees from the redevelopment to do it. So Baker Tilly, we paid their fees. Okay, yeah, because, because they, she came in with the calendar every year for us. Because this is my first year on the redevelopment commission, whatever the name <laughs> did. So I have no idea. And we meet maybe once or twice a year so i have no idea really what the purpose i mean so what i'm trying to say is i don't know what i'm doing on it there's not a whole lot other than the tip but once i once understand I, that once i pay those last two bond payments are so so if when we meet it might be who the committee well me if you guys come attend too, because you've been talking to Jason about this, okay, that's, that's fine. Just to yeah. give some more input. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I thought okay. we had more than the one tip district. Jason said he looked it up. And he said, oh, yeah. No, no, right. it's all we got. Yeah. We got that. I was thinking we it's had another one. He must have done away with it or something. He wanted. That, that it was more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did away with it. Okay. Right. Didn't get any money. So. Clear as mud. Thanks for that new news, Rick. Thanks yeah. alone. <laughs> Rick, always, did he say he was doing instructions and like budgeting through Gateway? Say that again. Now. Was he doing instruction on budgeting in Gateway? I think so, yes. Because <clears throat> I have submitter rights in Gateway and I'd be all for any <clears throat> extra education I could get on it. Well, the, the, way, the way they talked, they would come here and we can have as big a crowd as we want. So definitely interested. We, we could invite any anybody that's interested in department heads whoever's interested in budgeting or however we want to set it up we can invite as many people two to three hour session she says we usually lose them after that but two to three hours of and whoever wants to show up that's, interesting. Good idea. Well, that's very With worthwhile two new members yes so we'll just have to plan on whatever you guys want, how you're going to pay for it, and then X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's, let's have a chance to read first. Okay. Sounds good. Any other new business? Yeah, if that's the case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Steve, motion to adjourn. Pete, second. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Are you guys with your copies of stuff? I, no, I can't because I don't have the minutes. Or anything like because I don't get the minutes back until next time. Oh, okay. See, yeah. the ship ship file back over here. I hate to have it work. I'm all for it. Why do you keep the receipts from the girl? Matt, give me a copy of the. He doesn't need a copy of the. I didn't see the minutes on the phone.